All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Salt Mines. Of course, this is the show where we go into the StarCraft ladder, the most hardcore, fast-paced, elite, and competitive real-time strategy game in the world. We've got Fredegar in the top right, offering out the good luck, have fun to his opponent. And Olo, in the bottom left, the blue Terran says, you too, mate. You too. Uh, not sure if just a fan of the Irish band or is actually uh, offering the good luck, have fun, but a gas first opening for Olo. Now, for those who haven't watched the show, this show really is a study in humanity when they're put under pressure, right? We've discovered so much. Uh, we really get to see who comes out as tough as diamonds, able to withstand the pressure of losing from hard situations, and who basically just has 500 different excuses for why they lost. Oh, Olo really wanted to block this hatchery, but doesn't micro the SCV. The hatchery does get down, and Olo actually going for a double gas opening here, yet neglecting to put on the second gas geyser just yet, but definitely something naughty, very rare against a Zerg to do anything other than just rush straight for an expansion. But it is what it is. Now, Fredegar seems like a pretty standard build. Something like uh, 17, 17, 17. Uh, what, of course, that repi re I refers to, if you guys are a newbie, is the supply when the buildings go down, right? Uh, actually, I think Fredegar meant to put the spawning pool down and then accidentally cancelled the order. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the APM, 40 for the Terran, about 90 for the Zerg. I'd say we're, we're probably in the Gold League, maybe the Silver League, though. Fredegar not realizing that spawning pool didn't go down. Oh, no. <laughs> this game is about to be a hot mess. So Fredegar is about to try and build two queens when this hatchery finishes and is going to realize, hey, why can't I build queens? What's going on? <laughs> and he's going to be a little upset by that. The other side of the map looks like on gas now. A marine's out of factory, but I'm going to look at Fredegar's reaction here. Let's go. Oh, and Fredegar realizes that is about 45 to 50 seconds late. Actually, almost a full minute late, to be real. That's uh, 55 seconds late. My lord, Fredegar, get building drones, mate. you got to at least use your lover. Fredegar's frozen up, has no idea what to do after this absolutely crucial mistake. We'll build a third hatchery, which is not a bad call, but... Oh my lord, building two more overlords, three more drones. Fredegar is getting back into production now, but what a disaster of an opening for the Zerg. He now comes in and sees no expansion for the Terran. He's going to hide that overlord on that pillar. The Marine's just like, where'd he, where'd he go? Now, actually, wait, this. Oh my god! Is that burning its butt, or do you think it's just nice and toasty? Uh, let me know in the comments section. Nice and toasty? Is it, is it kind of like an electric blanket for the Overlord? They look like they're pretty sturdy creatures, or do you think that would be a little bit painful? I feel like it'd be a little, little bit of a painful simmer there on the buttocks, but <laughs> to each his own. Now, this Marine's going to come forward looking to deny scouting uh, a little bit. Olo's got another Overlord that wasn't quite on the pillar. And behind this, ooh, okay, so we have a one base battle cruiser opening. Now, I've often talked about how going battle cruisers adds about 500 points to your MMR, your matchmaking rating, your ELO. You might be more familiar with that term from like Dota or chess, but uh, essentially it's all the same thing. And the Zerglings come in, clean up that Marine. Fredegar really needs to get back on track with the macro. There are only 24 drones right now and is really behind in the production. The first queen's only popping out at three minutes 30, a minute late which is really putting a dampener on his entire opening. Uh, now, Olo here is going for a Viking first to try and deny scouting and does have enough minerals, almost enough gas, to build a battle cruiser right after that. A Rotoran is building for safety there for Fredegar. Uh-oh, Hellions are here, and there's not really anything to defend. They must have already killed the Zerglings. Indeed, they did. Four Zerglings did go down. A command center dropping at the corner. Olo. Uh, let's just say not the most solid player. I think Olo might have watched a fair bit of the Florencio files in his time. But uh, those three Hellions are roasting a bit of lava. I think that's pretty good for Fredegar. As long as you're not losing drones, I think you're okay with that. These Zerglings not going to do much here, but the Queen will deflect the Hellions for now. They're trying to fight her, which is a bit of an odd choice because Olo's forgotten to build a battlecruiser at home. This really is peak Starcraft if I've ever seen it, gang. And you know what they say, right? It's those who are ignorant who usually get the angriest. And oh my god, has to supply drop to get out of the supply block to start the battle cruiser. Does start another depot there, but the first BC starts at about four minutes thirty. Fredegar is building a few more queens, which will help. But man, BCs are very dangerous against just a couple of queens. There's no creep connecting the bases either. It's going to be really hard for Fredegar to defend. Now Fredegar doesn't know about this corner base either. Could easily deny that if Fredegar knew about it. But Olo right now hunting for these overlords. Hasn't found any with the Viking just yet, but we'll be going over that pillar 
in a moment. Now, Fredegar's like, dude, oh, it's one base. If Fredegar runs up the ramp, would see a starport on Attack Lab. That would be a good piece of information to have. The Overlord does go down there to that Viking. Lair is on the way. Now, Lair is really important because if you can get a Spire, you can make Corruptors and defend. 18 more drones are in production. So, Fredegar finally holding that drone key down. I don't know, man. The Battle Cruiser is already almost here. There's only five Queens out. I, I, I think Olo can almost win the game with this battle cruiser there's no spores built if it can isolate one or two of these queens on their own i mean none of them have transfuse i do not know how you could possibly defend this as fredegar this is really tough uh there's also a few hellions there scvs are getting transferred to the top left where a planetary is being made which means there's not enough money to make a second battle cruiser <laughs> so i gotta i gotta question the strategic decision making but dude fredegar is in for an absolute hot mess i think fredegar might lose lose their bananas a little bit get a little bit upset by this one because the battle cruiser is gonna get in kill four five six drones already almost gets a seventh but that one barely escapes on just one hit point the four queens do push the battle cruiser back the battle cruiser could just fly straight over this base this queen easily outmatched by that bc a couple spore crawlers build in the third but there's no spores in the main or the natural i mean this is easy pickings for a battle cruiser but olo does pull back for a moment is gonna yamato one of these queens not a bad move could definitely take out another queen or two with the battle cruiser down into half hit points the bc is now below 50 percent hit points he's gonna take out a few of these drones on the way out not too bad there but uh, yeah, we can see the Queen's pushing it on back. Roach is moving across the map for a counterattack, though. That definitely could get the work done. The next BC is still about 30 seconds away. Oh, this BC! Oh, no, you can't lose the BC! The whole point of BCs is that they don't die. Okay, Olo does get it away for now. Has to be careful to not F2 that one home, though. Roaches are here. Already two Hellions getting taken out on the low ground. The BC will eventually defend this, but these Roaches are going to bust through that depot and get in the worker line very quickly. This BC teleports home. Roaches cannot shoot up. And so one BC here, the SCV's trying to go running away, trying to get distance between themselves and the Roaches. The Roaches are actually going to take out this depot, uh, the tech lab as well. They really should be going after the SCVs. Those are the most vulnerable target. A second BC is here. You know what? Damage is damage. These Roaches are going to buy a fair bit of time. We've got more drones, queens, and spores building behind this in the production tab. We can see that. The Roaches aren't really getting big damage done though, are they? Not going after those SCVs. Those SCVs don't have many places to run. More roaches are coming in, but they're not getting the priority targets. And Olo doing a really good job keeping these SCVs alive. The battle cruisers gunning down the roaches. I mean, it's a lot of roaches to throw away. You've got to make sure you, you do something really good with the space that this buys you. Otherwise, Olo is going to be hitting you with uh, a few BCs in the near future. But you know what? There's no extra BC queued up because the tech lab got taken down. And the BCs are going to take out the last of these roaches. The SCVs are going to come home now. The planetary is mining the whole time. But the Zerg's up on three bases. Spire goes down. If that Spire can be protected, of course, Corruptors will spell disaster. Olo doesn't really have any production. And that's the problem with a lot of players who play BCs. They're like, I make some battle cruisers, and then maybe if you give me 20 minutes, I could do it. Oh! Oh! Already? Really? Easy? You leave? Own you, bro. Just admit it. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is the dumbest time to start gloating. Dude, my crew of battle cruisers. Fredegar's like, dude, do you even have any workers? I was in there, like, messing up your economy. Olo says three bases. Hey, mate, mate, that's two. That's two bases. Olo, Olo's trying to demoralize psychological tactics. Try and take the opponent out. Comes in, Yamato's two queens down. That Spore Crawler not going to stand up to those BCs. Uh-oh, this is a lot of damage going down. How many queens are out right now? Five queens, not enough to really take on two BCs. They can have longer range, though. If they pull to the left behind the spores, they can do okay. The BC's afraid of the spores, so the queens will start to get some damage done on them. But the Corruptors do start up. The first two Corruptors are building. Unfortunately, Fredegar never put workers on mining gas earlier. Only now has the increased gas income to build Corruptors. So this is a big problem for Fredegar. The queens go down. BC's kind of kite them out there. The spawning pool goes down as well. We've got roaches going across the map. Fredegar, who says, wait, you told me you have three bases. I'm going to go check for the corners. So he's sending roaches to the corner right now. Olo, you gave away your hidden base. This is why you don't taunt your opponent with your secret base. This is why I don't. When I'm proxying a dark shrine, I don't go, I have DTs, lol, leave. That's why I don't do that. I don't do that, guys, for a very good reason. It's because it's not a good idea to give away your secrets because then they're no longer secrets. <laughs> to be fair, it is the ultimate flex, though. So I'm, I'm kind of keen to see if Olo can win this game. The Corruptors, unfortunately, don't focus on the weak BC. So they can both teleport home and they will once again defend. There's now a third battle cruiser out as well. Uh-oh. 
Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, more roaches going down with no real damage, just a single depot. There's a starport with a reactor out now, which is an odd choice. So uh, is Olo going to go full air and just try and build Vikings to defeat the Corruptors? <laughs> Bro, rage loss, leve. Now, I'm pretty sure that's meant to be leave, but I like it, leve. Just rearranging the letters there as, 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 as Olo's gloating. Two more command centers in the main. And I mean, I wonder if Fredegar's getting worked up. Because when people talk like this to me, I get ultra competitive. I don't know about you guys, but when someone talks smack to me, suddenly I am in ultra focus mode. Some people get really turned off by it. But I'm like, dude, if someone talks like this to me, I'd be getting so... I'd just be like, I'm going to rip your head off, man. Like, I get I get like serial killer calm. Olo says, bro, stop being mad. <laughs> really, only one line of response got workers. Bro, stop being mad. Leve. <laughs> Leve, bro. I've got three battle crews that's is waiting for them all to be ready to teleport in again. They could have already flown across the map, I believe. So, I think that's meant to be sorry. Srui? Srui. That's the next level insult there. Srui, sorry, bro. And we're about to teleport in. There's eight Corruptors out, though. There's no point to continue. I won? What? Bye? You are my bitch? What? What? But Fredegar was victorious. Olo left the game. What? And not only that, Olo was actually going to be fine against the next wave. Because there's eight Corruptors out and could be building more. Fredegar has 74 workers, 38 drones. Roach Speed's on the way. Has actually bounced back from the damage. And yeah, even if three of those Corruptors get Yamato down, you're going to kill one of the BCs by the time they all go down. And then five Corruptors can handle two BCs. It'll be a close fight, but you'll win. So Fredegar was winning this game. I don't think Olu thought that. I don't know if Olu's mum called and said, get off, you need to do your homework or what? Okay, so apparently we've also got a screenshot of the post-game tag. So apparently Olu didn't need to run off to do homework because Olu immediately proceeded to message Fredegar, we've got this screenshot as well, where Olo is of course there saying, sorry bro, learn to play. <laughs> Fredegar's like, uh, I had double your workers, mate. The smiley face. <laughs> Kid, you killed almost nothing. I had three bases. You didn't even find them. <laughs> Fredegar's like, uh, you know replays, mate. I, I could see you only had two bases. <laughs> I'm diamond, you're bronze. Okay, I still owned you, you know what to. And that makes you mad. Pathetic loss, don't you agree? Keep dreaming, mate. Ah, God, I love to see you pissed. I offered you three times not to waste my time and skill. And apparently that's the end of the dialogue. I'm, I gotta say, the suspense is killing me. I, I've got to put a call out to anyone out there. If anyone plays against Olo on the ladder and has an experience like this, please send the replays in. I need to find out more. I need to delve into the insanity. I feel like we didn't get... I wanted to see the end of the game, the end of the strategy. I want to see more. This is... this is. I feel like we've just begun a mystery right now. If anyone out there knows who Olo is or can find any games of Olo <laughs> behaving in this manner, please share them with me. All right. Well, hopefully this game is going to have a bit more of a satisfying solution and, uh, and conclusion to it because I am still I mean, fake pretending you have three bases when you have two telling the opponent to leave three times, then leaving yourself, and then messaging them to tell them that they're angry that you beat them. It's confounding. <laughs> oh, well, let's get to the next one. We've got Clan Dinar's Melon Lord in the top left of the map. I like that name. I don't know why. I, I like melons. I like fruit. And uh, in the bottom right, we've got yet another name in Cyrillic, which I can't read, unfortunately. Uh, Yinte is how I would read those letters if they were in English. So I'm just going to call you Yinte. We got Yinte down here. By the way, shout out to the YouTube comment section. I know I've, I've been mentioning you guys a little bit, but uh, someone pointed out that after my last cast, uh, that Vlad and Vladimir are two separate names. I didn't know that. I had no idea. So I think I, I said, oh, I'm going to call this player Vlad. And then at some point I called them Vladimir. And someone was like, yeah, you know, those are two different names, Big. And I was like, I did not. I had no idea, actually. So uh, yeah, the, the more you learn. Thank you, everyone, for continuing to teach me language and, uh, and about the world. I do occasionally actually retain some of that information. So thank you very much. You're making me a little bit less ignorant day by day. Now, uh, Yinte is going to build a depot blocking the third. The thing about this map is this third is pretty much just as good as this third. And uh, Melon Lord might not even see that for a while. Might even just go and take the other third base. And that's 
really expensive. A supply depot is 100 minerals, it's only 400 hit points. You could build an engineering bay, only costs you 25 more minerals, you get 850 hit points, more than double. Not only that, you can also stop at 99% and then wait for it to get almost killed, cancel it, get 75% of the resources back. So weird choices here by Yinte, who's going for a double gas build order. And it's got a lot of idle SCV, so I can tell once again we are in the primo top of the ladder. Man, the lower leagues must be so much fun. There's a lot of... I, I often... I struggle. Like, I control for hours on end on that, like, really dumb, cheesy, weird strategies that are just meant to annoy my opponents. Don't get a single response. Do you guys know how hard it is for me to get these sort of rage compilations and, 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 and videos where people are, like, getting annoyed and, and getting angry at me? It's very, very rare. I play many hours of StarCraft, yet... I feel like down there, when you've got you've got players in the 50 APM, kind of 0 to 100 APM range, it feels like there is a much bigger amount of people giving you a piece of their mind. And <laughs> Hell, I, I guess it kind of makes sense, right? It's, it's always the guys who, who don't know how to fight at all, who are going to go up to someone in a bar and talk shit to them because they, they don't really fully comprehend how useless they would be at defending themselves. You know, it's the, the ignorance is bliss, the, the, the confidence factor that people have not realizing how bad they are at something. Now, these Lings are just going to kill these depots for free. And the thing is, Melon Lord's actually just droning up. Doesn't even have the money for a third base yet. So I don't think Melon Lord really minds uh, being, you know, delayed on these. And Yinte is not really spending their money. Their factory started at 2 minutes 40. This has got to be one of the most awful builds I've seen in a while. <laughs> it really shows that, like, uh, you know, like, up to a certain level, if someone's screwing with you, just keep, like, doing stuff. And no matter how much it throws you off, you've always got a chance because, like, this this player right now is frantically stutter stepping a marine and floating almost a thousand minerals three minutes into the game. Like that, <laughs> that kind of gives you an idea of just like where people's focus are. If someone's microing their reaper and it feels like you're playing Maru, guess what? They're, they're probably they're probably supply blocked and haven't built a worker in the last two minutes. Uh, anyway, Melon Lord's going to take these depots down. He's doing a pretty good job of not getting disrupted overall. Is supply blocked on 36, the famous 36 supply block, but up six workers. The problem that I think uh, Melon Lord has is maybe not realizing that it's still one base, right? Because there's no scouting over there. So the Lings will go over and get that info soon. And actually, he's going to see the floating barracks, which is a dead giveaway you're playing against a mech player. Because if they're using the barracks to go scout, that means they aren't intending to be building any marines, marauders, or anything like that out of it. So what do we got? We got an armory and a factory pumping hellions, another factory. So it's one base mech, my lord. I have not seen a one base mech build in a long time. I mean, this is some uh, Wings of Liberty era sort of stuff. It's going to be a tech lab coming in there. Spore crawlers are building on each base. Melon Lord doesn't really know what's happening and is a bit worried. So he's even building extra spores because let's be real, just like that last game, normally if your opponent's one basing, it's battle cruisers, right? That's like really common. It's one of those things where does it have to be BCs? No. But I reckon Melon Lord, like most Zergs out there, has been battlecruised one too many times and is now a little bit afraid of it. Could easily drop a Spire to defend this. Of course, Spire's not going to do well versus Thors and Blue Flame. Blue Flame wrecks Zerglings. Thors wreck Mutalisks pretty well. It's a pretty decent unit combo, and it's going to be kind of hard to fight if there's no Roach Horn. So with just a Baneling Nest, this could actually get really awkward. Technically, Banelings blow up Hellions really well, SCVs really well, and even Widow Mines quite well. If the Widow Mines aren't, you know, if they're a bit clumped up or whatever. Uh-oh. Oh, Hellions could do pretty well versus these Lings. The Lings just kind of A moving forward. Not good for Melon Lord, but good pullback there. It does keep some alive. We've got a Spore Crawler being cancelled. Oh, the Lings go back in. They all die. The SCVs are repairing them right now. It looks like this is just a big old mech all in. SCVs, Hellions, Widow Mines, and there'll be Thors rallying behind that as well. Thors do start to come across the map. Widow Mines are going to burrow. The Queen's walking into this. Hellbats are morphing. Oh god, oh god, this is looking really rough. A Hydra Den is on the way for Melon Lord. I mean, Hydras will be okay once they have upgrades, but they're very vulnerable to Hellions. This is looking really rough for Melon Lord. Doesn't want to really build Zerglings against the Hellbat Widowmine. The SCV is repairing are also very annoying as well. It's trying to lure the Queens into the Widowmine, which is kind of hilarious. The Queen uh, is going to take that shot. She almost goes down. She's still alive for now. Spinecrawler falls before it can finish. Pull back, Queen. Pull back. Pull back. Oh my god, Melon Lord's in big trouble right now. The Widow Mine does take out all the lava on that hatchery, which is actually kind of worth it. Both Queens going down on this third as well. Now, I think if Yinte pushes up the ramp into the natural, Yinte can close this game out. But Yinte is dilly-dallying a little bit, killing the hatchery and the Spore Crawler on this third base as well. Command Center goes down behind this, but there we go. We've got, of course, Supply Drops dropping. That's going to allow more Hellions to be built. But wait, where's the extra Thors? Oh no, Yinte only built one Thor and is now building nothing but Hellions. And is giving way too much time. Yinte showing no urgency. It's a one base all in. 
And it is not getting up there. If Yintain needs to get up that ramp right now, these Banelings can do well if they hit the Hellbats in a clump. But as it is, Yinte is taking forever to move up this ramp. Half the units have been left behind, left the barracks behind. Totally disorganized right now. The Baneling does roll forward. The Thor takes out the first Spine Crawler that's building. But Yinte just A-moving. Queens will come forward and fight it. The Hellions need to spread out. They need to spread out these Banelings. Oh, they got some pretty good hits. The Widow Mines are gone. But the Hellbats did pull back, allowing quite a lot of them to survive. If they go up there with the Thor and all morph into Hellbats, I think they can do it. But for some reason, they're individually morphing. One Hellbat morphs, but the other ones are still in Hellion form. Yinte dilly dallying, still not building Thors behind this. I'm not sure if Yinte control group the production. Yinte did and is now swapping into three starports and an engineering bay. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Yinte is going to say, look, I killed your third. I'm just going to take a planetary on my natural and then we're going to be like, good. The problem is your opponent's been mining off two bases for seven minutes. You've only been on one. So I do think that Melon Lord's going to build a bigger army right now. Melon Lord has got, what, six roaches, two hydras. The problem Melon Lord has, there's no roach upgrades. There's no hydra upgrades. There's Baneling speed. And Banelings are good versus the Helldats. If they can clear them up, Lings will wreck the Thor. But uh, it's a bit dicey. The roach speed does go down there. And what are we going to build with these starports? Uh, battle cruisers could work out quite well for Yinte. We'll see exactly what goes on. Uh-oh, watch out. Half the Hellbats are in Hellbat form. They're very clumped. Ooh, okay, the Baneling gets an okay hit. Not amazing. Hellbats do pull back. Melon Lord still with a bit too much of a weird mixed army. Still building Zerglings against Mass Blue Flame. A bit of a confusing decision, but hey, you're under pressure. Things happen, right? Decisions aren't always perfect when you're there. It's going to go for the extra gases and the third base. That's going to allow Melon Lord to keep macroing up. But as we said, Engineering Bay is... Wait, why... Two engineering bays? Why would you build... Oh. What? You didn't even have a barracks. It's like floating in the middle of the map, dude. The hell of the double engineering bay for? I didn't even know. So we've also got three starports with tech labs. So I, I imagine it's going to be Banshees because no fusion core has been built. 26 SCVs at 8 minutes. So Yinte's had next to no SCV production and isn't even fully mining the gases in the main. Um, and the engineering bays both just got selected there, which... What is the plan right now? We're just building turrets everywhere? You've already got Thors. Why would you need turrets? <laughs> the level of decision making in this match is incredible. Oh my lord. All right, so Melon Lord has a squad of Roach Hydra. Roach speed is done, so the Roaches aren't too bad. I won, bro. You know that too? Melon Lord's like, have you? <laughs> you killed us to by luck, not skill. Yes. Wait, what? <laughs> what? I, I own you? You killed SCVs repairing the Thor by luck, not skill? Easy win? Why are you talking about the SCVs killing the repairing? Oh, the Banelings killed them, yeah, but like what? He's like, yeah, I made some Banelings. They, they blow stuff up in an area. He's like, yeah, it's not skill that they hit an area. You didn't target fire that. Uh, Melon Lord comes in and sees the planetary. You just raging. Sorry, easy win. Oh my god, today is the day of players who are... Just like, like, I feel like this is just like some, you know, Yinte has stopped in the middle of a, a tennis match and he's just like, you're mad. Wow. Why are you so mad, dude? Painlings can't do anything with Thor. You just killed SCVs that were repairing it, says Yinte. Yinte still only has the one Thor from the early game. Never built a second one. That's luck, not skill. Easy one. Easy win. Had you easy. Wait, 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 wait. So the argument, wait, there's an argument here. The argument is... You made Banelings, and I have a Thor. Thor is good versus Banelings. This is all correct. Therefore, I won the game. That's so. So Yinte is saying, you know, basically like you're you're lucky. The weird thing is Yinte is saying you're raging, but is also implying that the opponent held the push, and and it was through luck, not skill. Therefore, it doesn't count, and therefore Melon Lord's angry that they were lucky. You're being mad for your rage loss. I wait, but. So Yinte is saying, okay, so, oh, okay, okay, Yinte is rewriting history. I forgot, guys, we're living here. In the, we're living here in the dictatorship of denial. I forgot about that. We're rewriting history however we like. And Yinte right now is saying, you lost, you lost. And is trying to repeat it enough times that Melon Lord also believes you lost. Now, I'm like, what was his name? Brendan Dacey or whatever, how to make a murderer. I don't know if Melon Lord, that's going to work here. Like, you know, right now, Yinte is going for the, the, the kind of dodgy police interrogation method where they're like, you killed her, didn't you? And, and the person's like, uh, no. And then they just like repeat it enough times until he agrees to say, yes, can I have a drink of water now? And they're like, you did it. We got it on camera. We got it here. Sign this confession. Like Yinte right now is applying some truly archaic 
methods of psychological warfare. Does get a bit of damage with the Hellion run by, which is kind of entertaining. It's going for the cloaked Banshees with speed as well. And that actually could do really well. There's only six Hydras. There is 10 Queens that shoots up though. The Banshees are going to go after the army right now. Yinte coming in with the Banshees. The Hellion Banshee, wow, very cheeky play here. Look at that, two control groups as well. Almost zero micro or macro uh, up until this point, but now he's trying to control two army groups at once. This is super advanced stuff, but also the Hellions are fighting the army for some reason. Oh no, they run in, they do get a queen. Banshee's gonna go to the left side. The thing is, the Banshees reveal themselves. They should be going after the economy, taking out the drones. Instead, they take out a few roaches and now a hatchery. But this is going to give Melonlord a lot of time to respond. Melonlord coming over with some Hydralisks that do have double upgrades now, as well as the Queens. One Banshee, two Banshee, three Banshees have gone down, or two Banshees, sorry, only three left. And there are Spores in each of the bases, which means you'll need some very good micro to avoid those. Nope, copping a lot of hits from the Spore Crawlers. Even with the Hyperflight Rotors, it gives you speed here. I mean, these Banshees could still get absolutely annihilated. Queens, of course, have very good range, and they are going to corner these Banshees. The Banshees, they, you, you know the Queens have longer range. Yintei trying to hide in the corner. Not realizing, apparently, that the Banshees only have six range and Queens have seven anti-air range. You're just being madad. I won. You see that yourself. Yeah, obviously, it was meant to be mad, but I like the idea that he's mad at his dad and that's why he's like this. You see that yourself. Sorry, kid. You lost. You must leave. I like that. The you must leave kind of strikes me as uh, definitely someone. <laughs> Bro, rage off. Just quit. I owned you and you know that too. Melon Lord's just like, uh, make me, man? Melon Lord, I think, is getting pretty distracted because Melon Lord really should be like... Re oh, actually, Melon Lord's rebuilding. Melon Lord's got plus two range on the way. Okay, Melon Lord's doing pretty damn well and seems to be macroing up well, whereas Yinte, flying around with the Banshees, doesn't seem to have any sort of solid follow-up play, isn't building any more SCVs or anything. The last two Banshees get a few more workers, bring up to 28, which is definitely a sizable amount of kills, but the Zerg is still up five workers at the end of it. It doesn't matter how much damage you do if you have no macro. Oh, the third goes down. You, you're just pissed off, bro. Lose with Dignoti. I like the idea that Dignoti is just the, the, the Russian word of dignity. They're like, have some Dignoti. <laughs> Not like a bad loser, owned and crying for mummy, easy win. Hey, you're the guy who called him my dad earlier. Now you're saying he has mummy issues, mate. There's no, inf there's no evidence of that. You played disrespect, sorry. <laughs> what I love about this so much is that Yinte is being triggered literally by the opponent just reactively going, ah, you've got a ton of Hellions, make some Banelings, rolls them in. But because Yinte had a single Thor, Yinte is like, well, that part of your army is not good versus this part of my army. Therefore, I am bigger brain than you. I'm smarter. I win the strategy game. And it's actually kind of fantastic because like, this is like the classic kind of you're playing the game wrong. Therefore, you lost. Like, like it's it's the greatest form of cognitive dissonance, right? We used to see, like, Idra do this all the time. He's like, oh, well, they just made this, and this only works if I make this mistake. And it's like, and, you know, we always find ourselves saying this. We've all done this as StarCraft players, right? You're saying this right after you made that mistake and it worked. Rather than going, ah, I made that mistake. I really need to fix that. Let's get better. You're going, it doesn't count. It's worthless. Your win is not worth as much because it would have only worked if I made this mistake. And you're like, kind of like there's always mistakes inherent in, in winning any strategy game right whether it be on a micro level a strategy level army composition economy management that's kind of like you know all sport is it's kind of like defined by that but some players like once they latch onto that they will not let it go and what i love about this is yinte is reinforcing not just in melon lord's mind but in yinte's own mind this is not a loss remember guys girls ladies zealots zerglings marines cheeses macro plays you gotta have excuses in your back pockets. Yinte is basically on the road to becoming a pro gamer because Yinte has realized that if you don't take responsibility for your losses, then you never have to lose a game. And that's exactly what Yinte is doing right now. The Banshees in the south side getting caught by the Hydras, not watching them, is running in the main and getting quite a few Queens though. That's so many Banshees, oh my god. Vipers would destroy this with Parasitic Bomber of Duck, but hey, Yinte is still doing some good damage. And he's even taunting, says, I love to see you mad. The only reason I stay, and is dropping the smileys in the chat. Oh my lord. All right, Yinte right now. Now, Melon Lord is in a dangerous circumstance where you can tilt out of the game. You can, uh, Your opponent's talking so much smack. You just get angry and distracted and you stop focusing on putting them in the ground. So there is always that option, but without like tanks or mass Thor or some sort of army that's going to scale a bit better. Banshees are a harassment unit, but they're not a, a game-winning finishing unit. Yet Yinte doesn't seem to have any other mode. I also love that Yinte is floating thousands of resources and he's just like, 
not expanding, not even mining all the gases on the natural. Like, this truly is tunnel vision from Yinte. I've got to go to Yinte's camera. We've got to watch this from Yinte's camera for the next minute. We've got to get inside the mind of the Yinte. Yinte comes in, gets a queen. He's going to kill the spore crawler as well. Loses a banshee by flying over it rather than actually shooting it. Looks like another one does take damage. We can see Yinte here spamming clicks like mad. Looks at home. Okay, what are we going to do? You can see. Okay, we're going to grab all the SCVs and we're going to send them to that base. Are we going to lift the command center? Oh my god, he's lifting. Or actually not lifting, but he's going to build a new command center in the bottom. So basically Yinte is doing the super solid high level strategy of I'm going to put a base in a weird position in the, in the edge of the map and hope you don't see it. But he saw some army down there, so he changes paths and sends his SCVs to the top of the map. Yinte goes back in the base. He's like, yeah, I'm killing stuff. And this is another thing, actually, because if you think about it, right, the way Yinte is focusing on the game, it plays into Yinte's whole focus, which is, right, I stare at the fight, and then as long as I kill some stuff with these banshees, I can count this as a win, because Yinte is basically blind to the biggest strategy game, right? The macro is probably silver level at best, at best. Um, you know, it's it's really like there, there's no real overall strategic awareness, no no clever tech switches or anything. Oh, Yinte's army! Yinte's army gets caught! Okay, no, 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 does pull it back, does pull it back. So Yinte right now can just stare at a fight, kill some units and go, I won that fight and therefore I won the game. Okay, let's go back to everyone's camera. Yinte coming forth with the Banshees. Don't attack into the planetary, Melon Lord. Oh no, the tank and the Hellions are doing a lot as well as the planetary. Oh, the Banshees are going to absolutely slaughter here. But wait, the Banshees just turned and killed his own Hellion. Oh my god, Yinte is panicking right now. The planetary didn't get repaired by enough SCVs. It goes down. The Thor from earlier is going to fall the tank. Bile taking out Banshees, you rageless pussy. Noosey push with mass. Easy win. You lost like a, uh, like, like a BLT bitch, a bacon, lettuce, tomato bitch. We, but Benothal, no, I owned you. We both know I owned you. Wow, um, this is going to be the episode of the salt mines with two games in a row with two players who have lost their minds more than anything else up to now. This is honestly, this might be even more insane than the guy in the very first episode who was trying to argue that scissors, paper, rock is an imbalanced game because rock has no counter. <laughs> This is just like to the point where they can't even type anymore. Absolute beautiful, beautiful insanity here. Absolute madness. Well, there we go. Melon Lord and Yinte, thank you very much for these games. Uh, Melon Lord and of course the one before. Thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed more games of Salty People, click on some of these cards on the screen. Check out some of the other videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to check out the Patreon down below in the description. We'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye and good night, everybody.